then many people, many members, including me, we questioned him, is it worth spending that much of money for about five minutes of its production around the Meenakshi temple in one particular day in one year? Is it worth it? I don't think I questioned it and still I think it was not worth it. Many other more, I should say, it can be utilized much more better in many different ways. That's what I want to say. Okay. Any comments? No, I mean, it's, a, it's all a topical thing. It's a topical thing and it depends on people and society and all that. And uh, what's done in one place, what's done in India may not be possible, feasible, practical in other countries, etc. So it's, uh, it's up for discussion. For us, it's very sacred. For us, it's very sacred. And uh, it's a way for the community to come together and... Uh, these are the things that made India what India is. These are the things that brought us all together. And that is why these are the things they tried to break. So they knew what, what was our strength. So this is our strength, really speaking. So taking Bhagavan, you can't come to the temple. I will come to you. There are lame people who have never gone to the temple. What about that person? Swami says, I'll come to you. Then all he does, he does like. Chidambaram, Swami has come, Ekambareshwara has come here, or rather not Ekambareshwara, Kanjibaram, Ekambareshwara has come here. That's it. That guy is fulfilled now. Even though he has not seen the temple. He can't walk or he doesn't have eyes or whatever it is. So it's a, it's a, it has massive ramifications. Uh, Raji, it is, uh, it is to be understood properly. And so I'm not going to, I don't want to question that at all. I would not want to question my tradition. This has a value and uh, it's beautiful. You should see the, you should, of course, I don't know if you've seen a Ratha festival in, in India and it's it's so big. You, the, the entire city is involved in this, the entire city, somehow or the other. And you should see the... Ther, I mean, I used to play on the street right outside the Ther. Huge area. And so, that's a different science altogether. These people who are pushing and pulling the chariot and stopping the moving chariot. These are all impossible tasks. <laughs> anyway, that's a different topic. But uh, yeah, that's a topical thing in your system. Is it needed and all? Valid because because you're all putting the money. That uh, the, ther, the chariot of our country was funded by the king. Okay, individuals may have contributed a little bit here and there. But King was there. He said, come on, we are going to do this. The government can do it. Very easy for the government to do because the government is getting taxes. You know, it has a lot of cash to spend. And uh, But in Houston, it's not like that. The mayor uh, will come for the function, but uh, he's not going to give one dollar for it. And so we have, to be <laughs> we have to be concerned about it. Therefore, your question, I think, is relevant. Is this worth it? Because I'm paying for it. My people are paying for it. And there are other problems we need to work on. So it's a relevant question. So I think I consider it to be a relevant question. Meant for the community to discuss and debate. Yeah. 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 Then you are That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Also, also, Guruji, for the Rata Yatra, the Rata festival of that village, all the people who had left the village come back for the festival. More importantly, it's a social get together. <laughs> Yeah, its, it's ramifications are huge, huge. Um, yeah, it's, it, it, it's, I'm just, you know, this, the money can be used much better in a different way. That's all my. Sure, sure. Thank you, Haraji. Premaji. <clears throat> yeah. Haraji, the mention of the Ratha brought an emotional response to your answer. <laughs> It's very true because for 
for organisms that would never make it to get a glimpse of the Lord, it gives a chance. And it, it, it's a, it is something that cannot be verbalized. I've seen it happen time and time again, whether they were birds or whether they were creepy crawlers, whatever. It has an impact, that presence, when they see it. But my question comes to, uh, in Nididhyasanam, you mentioned that let the mind be available to me now. Okay. I watch it all as Ragadvesha and Anatma. Okay. Whatever is coming up. But you, may, I couldn't, because there's a lot of um, uh, disturbance in the transmission today. You said something about Shabda and you said Anatma also. I couldn't catch that sentence. How Shabda connected to that? Could you please explain? Yeah, so there is a word in the shloka itself hmm. called Shabda Deen Vishayans. What does it say there? Tektva. Tektva. Okay. Shabda Deen Vishayans Tektva. Krishna's word it is. Shabda, the word Shabda is Krishna's word. So, Vishayans Tektva. So, Vishaya means what object? Object means what? What is, what is our Vedanta definition of object? Anything that is an object of our senses is an object. So, a little chirp of the bird is also an object. It is an object of the ears. It need not be a tangible object, you know, thing that you can hold in your And so, that's all Shabda Deen. Shabda Deen means all the all the things which are picked up mice by our sense organs. That's all is the meaning of Shabda. So he's saying Tektva. Tektva means if, if let it, go. Uh, yeah, let go. And if it is a session, in order to sit in meditation, the mind must already already know this. Okay, already know it. And that is why I'm able to withdraw and sit for some time. And so when I'm going to do Nididhyasana, I can't be worrying about so many different things. Uh, I can't be, I can't be either worrying about things or be attracted by things. Okay. And that's why he's saying Shabda Deen Vishayans Tektva. Yeah, that's the base. That's why I brought the word Shabda. So emptying the mind through practice uh, of all that is not required and waiting for the connection to happen. So waiting for the connection to happen is not the correct statement. The connection has already happened during Shravanam and Mananam. Connection happens yeah. only in a classroom or following the teaching. In Indidhyasanam, no. So when repeated shranam happens? Correct. Correct. In in, in Nididhyasanam, no new knowledge will occur. Mm. Nothing new will happen. It is meant to just absorb whatever I understood. Sometimes we sometimes when I write, what happens? As I'm listening to Swamiji, I write something, I get something, I said very profound it is. And then immediately I'll put a circle around. As though it is meant for me to say, hey, this is a very important thing. Go and dwell over it. That phrase he uttered, something happened. I understood that phrase. And circle, I put a quick circle. And suppose that circle is meant for me only to come back to it. Okay. So that is where connections happen. In a class is where connections happen. And uh, Nididhyasanam per se, there won't be any new connection. Textbook example of the textbook it. definition. Yeah, textbook definition of Nididhyasana is that. Textbook. It doesn't mean you don't get clarity when you do dhyana. You'll get clarity also. Because we, there is no hard line between these things. Textbook, the definition wise, there is a hard line. We do define what is Ravanam. We do define what is Mananam. We do define what is Nididhyasana for our understanding. Then life goes on, you know. <laughs> Guruji, yeah, again, I, yeah, I, because of my connection, you cut off. So I'll watch the YouTube uh, later on. 
it will be on it because I didn't hear anything. For so what was audio you said, for, for others? Was audio okay? For me. Yeah, audio is okay. Yeah, All right. For others, it's okay. It's mine. So I'll so, watch it. So, Premanji, the what is it? Is it the internet connection at home? Is, what or is it the computer? I don't or? know what it is. It's this past week. It has been very, very much fluctuating and coming, and you freeze. I don't I know see. why you freeze. So when you freeze, I don't hear a thing. Okay, okay. It's probably a slow connection over there. Mm. It could be. Yeah. It could be. So unless I change rooms and go somewhere else and see if it improves or stay closer to the model. Sometimes, sometimes if multiple people are using the internet because the, mm. the fiber is, is the same it. thing and then put, then what happens? There could be a slowdown for one person. Or you may yeah. want to. It, it's also evening time. So Even time. it's okay. night time. So a lot of, lot of people using it. Remedy, you can you may try shutting off your video so that the audio comes through clear. I did, but uh, what happens is um, when it freezes, it freezes my side parties. Namaste. Namaste. Yeah, hey, Maji, go ahead. <clears throat> Normally, when talking about all the uh, indriyas, always we say no shabda din because that is. Shabda only is mentioned. It it covers everything, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right. That's the same. Shabda Sparsha Rupa Rasaganda. So, the minute uh, when all these things have to be mentioned, Shabda only is mentioned. And Shabda Adin. So, in the yes. same manner. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. He could have said Sparsha Adin. Uh, <laughs> because there he said, in fifth chapter, he said Sparsha, right? Sparshan Krutva Bahir Bhagyan, he said. Very interesting. He could have said Shabdan Krutva Bahir Bhagyan. Very interesting. Sparshan Krutva. Because he says, this is a guided meditation. You better pay attention to the words. Don't just block off all words because somebody is telling you the dhyana of guidance is happening. So words, yes, must be open. Because Maybe that's why. Sound is the last uh, thing which goes off. I mean, when a person dies, I think sound is the last of the uh, indriyas to shut down. Something like that I've heard. I don't know. That is the for, those, for those who are not using a hearing aid. Okay. All right. Because hearing aid means already gone, long before gone. No, 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 no. <laughs> Where a person dies, they say sound is the last one to shut down. Yeah, possible, possible, because subtle, subtlest, subtlest. That's why it starts from Akasha. Subtlest, yeah, correct. Yeah, Vaidya, please. Egmarji, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. So I joined the class a little late. So you said you you mentioned about Ratha. Perhaps you mentioned the Tiruvudai Marudurte. Is that what you mentioned? Yeah, that's the temple that I visited with my parents at that time when the construction was going on. Yeah. Yeah, Puja Swamiji put in a lot of effort for reviving that there after uh, 70 years. Mahalinga Swami Temple there. Yeah. Yeah. And so um, uh, last year I met um, once again Maheshji, whom you probably know, the person who managed, project managed that their construction. Do you know him? He's a brahmachari who lives in Terudai Mardur itself. Oh, no, I don't Mahesh know. Mahesh Sarma. I see. Okay. So he told me, so the so there are five tears in all, as you know, in Terudai Mardur. The biggest one is for Swami Mahalinga Swami, one for Ambal. And for the other people who don't know, one for Subramanya Swami, one for Ganesha, and one for Chandigeshwara. So the first tear, I think, ran in 2010. And then every succeeding year, you know, one, 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 one more tear came. The last one was completed, physically completed in 2015, before Puja Swamiji attained Mahasamadhi. So Maheshi told me that uh, when Swamiji came back, uh, to Rishikesh in September of 2015, 
Before Swamiji passed away, Maheshi got a chance to meet him. And Maheshi gave him the happy news that the final, fifth and final tear was ready. And Swamiji said, Sankalpam Purti Achin. And he smiled. Oh, amazing. And then, and then in 2016, during the uh, Margai Masam, uh, Margai Masam, Thai Masam, I think that's when they do that tear. One year we saw, uh, we went there on January 1st of uh, 2020, actually. We were in Tirude Mardur. We saw the tears and all brought out because the festival was going to start to happen in a few days. So 2016 was the year all the five tears came out. 2016. Very good. Very good. Started in 2010. Yeah. And then... Yes, I believe 2010. And then, you know, it's every subsidy. Because each of these tears are massive tears. So took uh, time to build, um, raise funds, build. And then, and then after Swamiji passed away, I think Unkarananda Ji was, I think, conducting the... the, the uh, he was at least, you know, supervising the arrangements for the tear for sure. Now I don't know who it is that is running it after Unkarananda Ji also attained Samadhi during COVID time. Yes. Some succeeding years, I remember our Swamiji also, we used to go there. I used to always go there, but I've seen video captures of those events in 2016, yeah. 17, 18. Recently, also, sorry, 2021, also, I may have seen. But yeah, after Omkaranda Ji, we did like to know who was managing. Yeah. So, and then you mentioned the kings of the old days, they used to, you know, build the, build the chariots, which is, uh, you know, the, the Rathas. Which is absolutely true. And then, as a token of uh, respect for the king, the king's image would be carved on you know some small part of the tear. So in this case, because Puja Swami took the initiative, there is one in the Mahalinga Swami there. There is one small place where you can see Swamiji's image there. Very nice. And Maheshi showed me that because uh -huh. he was right there, right? He was project manager. If you have a picture sure. or something, you share it with us. Yeah. I don't know if I took a picture of that, uh, but uh, I can reach out to Maheshji and find out. Uh, sure. And then, uh, you know, the other thing, this people in our class may be very interested to know. So, Parmacharya, Kanchi Parmacharya, had seen the tear actually running 70 years ago, when it before it stopped running. And Parmacharya had made a prediction that when the Tiruvade Maridur tear will be revived once again, at that time, Sanatana Dharma will also be revived in India. He had made a prediction like that. So now that the tear is there, it's been a few years, you know, let's uh, let's uh, all pray that that prediction comes true. Yeah, I've heard that. I've heard that. Somebody mentioned long ago about that particular importance of the chariot of that temple. Very interesting. Very, very interesting. Good. Thanks, Vaidya. Good, good, uh, good uh, information there. Prasadji, go ahead. Namaste, Jagamati. I uh, just wanted to be explicit on the Viparet uh, Bhavana uh, because that's the part of uh, Nididhyasana. So I just want to confirm. So is it not the uh, uh, the, the experience of mine today uh, opposed to uh, the knowledge which I have. So that's how the Viparita Bhavanas result into. So then, of course, Nididhyasana is already defined. I... Yeah, I can hear you. Yes. No, actually, my uh, battery is down for some reason. I think I may lose it. Yeah, that's uh, that's the first question I have. Yeah. So first question is whether the experience of mind is negated in Nididhyasana. Is that the question? No, actually, um, the I am defining uh, Viparita Bhavana because that's what we discuss when it comes to uh, uh, Nididhyasana. So, my understanding of uh, Viparita Bhavana, so to be explicit on that is, uh, it's the knowledge which I have, I'm sorry, the experiences which I face today in the uh, in the world uh, versus are opposed to the knowledge which I have. So, that's the difference which causes this Viparita Bhavanas. Yeah, that experience is Viparita Bhavana. So, ex experience is there. 
experiences are all, always going to be there. Uh, nobody is going to remove experiences. Okay. But that Vipalita Bhavana is what? The feeling that I am I am a mortal. The feeling that I am subject to pain and hurt and the feeling of the feelings that we don't want. Okay. And which we get as an average person also. Okay. So Vipalita Bhavana Nivrit to a large extent, Nitityasana will take care of that because it makes my knowledge alive. Makes my knowledge alive. I can extract. So it must be aware. It is like that battery charged. Only the charge is there, the charge can be used. Otherwise, the charge won't be used. Simply battery. So that Nitityasana does that. Yeah. So that, that is what we say. Bhavana Nivriti, no. Viparita Bhavana Nivriti. Bhavana, Bhavana is always there. You cannot do, there is no Bhavana Nivriti possible. Hmm. When Bhavana I say, is, uh, sorry, uh, when I say uh, experience, so I am taking like transactional analysis where I am at the child level, which I didn't have actually the real knowledge because even I am like childlike. Uh, even though I, I studied uh, uh, all the sastra and all that, but still I am at, uh, you know, there's a possibility that I'm still like. Uh, now I experience some uh, situation in the world. Now, how do I actually, uh, for example, yeah, I may think that I'm a jnani. Now, uh, I, I would say that I'm a jnani because I mean, once I read all this, <laughs> I should not say I'm a jnani, right? So, but my childlike thing comes out and say that uh, if somebody says that you are not, no, 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 I am a jnani because I read all these things. So that's uh, the experiences versus uh, the the knowledge. And I'm defining knowledge like I am like a childlike still, for example. I have not grown uh, in my attitude. So that that difference, uh, uh, which causes all these viparita bhavanas, that's, that's when I say the knowledge versus. Uh, yes. Yes. Okay. Give, giving too much reality to Ankara. Hmm. Ankara itself is an imposter, is mithya. Ankara is useful. Ankara is useful. Without Ankara, no interaction is possible. Yeah. No interaction is possible without Ankara. But but then Ankara, when somebody criticizes me, how do I deal with it? Is one thing. That's what you're talking about. So to a large extent, the vision of Vedanta is alive, alive in me. So I, I, I enjoy that vision. So the palam, the, the palam of the jnanam, for it to manifest in one's life, Vipurita Bhavana Nivriti is, is important. In the sense, we, we may not know, it's already happening. But everything is mithya, aham, aham satyam means what? It's a, it has to, for, for it to manifest in my life, this is something called Tula Avidya Nibriti. Means what? Every interaction, can I see that two Mithyas are interacting and there is something Satyam and I am that Satyam. I am unaffected by what is happening, but I must still respond because there is an effect for my body, for everybody else. It's, it's an unsafe situation, suppose. Yeah. Unsafe situation, I cannot run away from unsafe situation. It doesn't say you should stop doing stuff. You do whatever you do, but do you understand? Yeah. Good. I think what you said is uh, it's acceptable. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, second question I have is uh, I mean, generally uh, going back because we are in the last chapter, so I'm just recollecting certain things which I want to confirm. So the uh, Bahya versus uh, uh, yeah, the Antar. So uh, if I call it as like sort of epistemology out, outside world which I am dealing with versus the enlightenment because the uh, internal. Uh, so it is, uh, my question is about experience. Uh, uh, it's centered around experience. So here, um, the Bahya, which is basically uh, epistemology, uh, where the experience is important. But when it comes to enlightenment, it is not a, uh, enlightened, sorry, the experience which accomplishes this freedom. Because when we call, define the, uh, uh, the liberation or uh, uh, enlightenment as uh, freedom, then the uh, experience doesn't accomplish that fact. Uh, it is only recognition because we talk about knowledge. 
So it is the recognizing that the, the I notion, uh, which is my, uh, 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 what do you call that, uh, 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 Pratyagatma. So because, if, because we studied the Pratyagatma long back. So the Pratyagatma, which is basically my, uh, the, the I notion, which is the content or the nature of the thought which comes into my mind, that once it becomes uh, uh, the consciousness, becomes means I'm using a Brahma with Parama Apnuti type of thing. So if that is converted into or becomes uh, or recognizes into uh, uh, into consciousness or the Sakshi, uh, that that's the meaning which I'm getting there. So it is the recognition rather than experiencing. So in other words, the Brahma Karavritti, uh, the final enlightenment, is not the experience, it is actually recognizing the fact that I am Brahman. Uh, whereas whereas Correct. the yeah, the other thing, which is the uh, Bahya, which is uh, epistemology, it is all about that pervasion of the in the mind about any knowledge which you get because you are removing the ignorance of the object in the mind because when the vritti comes up. So that's like Bahya. So that's the so experience is what I wanted to be clear. It is not the experience which we get here. It is the recognition. So, so for everybody else, <clears throat> he is asking about this jnana. Since we talk about knowledge, knowledge is not new to us. We know so many things. We keep on knowing, knowing, knowing. All life long we have been knowing. So what is the difference between that kind of knowing and this kind of this knowledge, Brahma Vidya, Atma Vidya, that they say Atma Bodha. Those words they use. Is there any difference? Well, one different. In, is there any similarity? Yeah, there is similarity, right? What is the similarity? There also knowledge is involved. I have to know something. Knowledge is vastu tantram. It is centered on the object. If I have to know about, if I have to know how to read, you know, as a child we used to learn how to. The teacher used to teach us how to read clock. They will say twelve o'clock, one o'clock, and all they used to teach us. And then somehow we learned all that. Then 12, 5, 12, 15, 12, 30, and then all that we used to learn. So that, it's all knowledge, pure knowledge. After that, we... But then, here also it is knowledge, exactly like that. Atma Brahma. Aham Brahma. Asmi. Brahma is understood because Satyam Brahma. Once I understand Satyam and Mithya, Brahma is understood. Then through... Analysis of Jiva, Atma is understood and Atma and Brahma cannot be different. That's very clear. Understanding is happening. Now, in the case of this clock, etc., any object, any knowledge, para, uh, Aparavidya, it's called Aparavidya. Correct? Apara means it's a Vishaya. Shabdadin Vishayanam Nyan. It is, it is a knowledge of an object which you can objectify. Okay, you can objectify. That objectification is not possible with this knowledge. Do you know why? Because Brahma is not an object. Atma is not an object. It is me. Therefore, there is no object to Vritti happening. And I see a clock, immediately clock knowledge happens. And clock Vritti happens. But in this case, no Vritti can happen. After Jnanam, Vritti disappears. Like putting the that beetle nut, you know, that beetle nut is there. In India, it's very popular. Beetle nut, park, right? Supari, supari. That supari, he says, you put it, supari powders in the water. What it will do? It will, it is because it is, it, it has the absorptive capacity. It will take away all the dust particles in the water. And then what happens? It will just settle down because it's heavy. So it will settle down and the water will be clear and you can't see anything. So like that, that is the example they give. They give about this knowledge. Knowledge will come and then it will create the, it will give you the knowledge and then it will disappear. It will disappear means what? What will disappear? Knowledge will disappear. No, knowledge won't disappear. There is no object. You can't wait for an experience. Prasad is saying experience. There is, you can't say, I had experience of Atma. Why? Because you are Atma. Atma is there every time. It always there. Poor Atma can't go anywhere. And so, 
that that akhandakara vritti they say they have they use some technical words and one is called vritti vyapti and then other is called phalan vyapti vritti vyapti means yeah i got it when you say yeah i got it that is vritti vyapti then there is something called phalan vyapti phalan vyapti means you recognize what you know as the object that you have been looking at you can point to the object and say i know that that the thing doesn't exist for brahma vidya why because you are the pointer you are talking about the swarupa of the pointer there is a question of pointing to atma so it's a bit technical but yeah that's uh, that's how we understand it thank you Yeah, sir, Ramuji and Vaidya. If there is anything short, we can take it. Ramuji, go ahead. Just uh, regarding the temple car car festival in Kalpati, there are uh, three villages. We have got six uh, uh, cars, which are very old, and three days it is being run in November. In November fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, or thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. It is just I wanted to mention. This. Correct. Correct. that uh, kashil padi kalpati yeah kerala is very good about still preserving their traditions uh, they struggle sometimes elephants are there even here in tamil nadu we constantly hear elephants dying i don't know why that is uh, it's very really sad to hear that we can't maintain an elephant or what so for this festival also elephants are brought in for two temples one festival is a temple is not elephant is not taken Okay, okay. Puram, of course, we know is huge. It's, it's world famous. It is. So, yeah, my dear. <clears throat> Nagmaji, quick question on the vipari the bhavana nivritti. That basically means removing the wrong notions of oneself, right? Is that what it is? No, no, it's not that. No, removing wrong it's not that. Uh, removing wrong notions of us. Once have happened in Shravanam itself. Oh, okay. Shravanam manan is meant for what you just said. Okay. Okay, and and so what is the then this in Nididhyasana? Nididhyasana says it's like people from America uh, coming for a two for a two week vacation to India. Uh huh. Oh yes, I'm going to the wrong side of the car. <laughs> Pratik Bhutan Dajis example. No, that's we just have the example. Uh, oh, okay. So. <laughs> and then we go, 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 go and then say the driver is sitting there. Oh wait a minute, sorry. And then sorry, that sorry to to remove that sorry, it's called nididhyas. Got it. So you have to sit in the back seat of the car, and then you have to meditate. You have to say no. <laughs> in india it is opposite and there it is like this here it is like this. there here there here like that you have to do all that tamasha mm-hmm. so you come to know and that i am now very clear in india but back to us you have to go and may take a few days to reacclimatize but mm-hmm. that is nididhyasam nididhyasam does not create any new knowledge mm-hmm. So, vipari the bhavana nivriti is just this wrong notion that happened in shavanam itself. You are saying so. Wrong notion means I am unable to bring my teaching to bear upon my life, day to day activities. Mm-hmm. That to help me do that is what is needed. It is insult. Okay. 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 No, no, no. No, no. Is what? Uh, am I clear about what I know? I know we say, but then if somebody asks me a question, then again doubt. Oh, what happened? Somebody asks me a question, I begin to answer. Then I begin to get a doubt. Oh, correct. You are right. I didn't think of that. Ah, uh, how to make sure all the doubts go? That's thano nikhana na nyaya. When you insert a pole on the ground, what Ramuji is saying is. you make a hole then you put the pole on the ground and then you have to stabilize it then you put all the mud in there after putting the mud what do you do you know what they do they actually shake it they actually shake it you know why 
when you shake it the mud will further go down further go down and then you will have to put more mud into that more clay or more cement into that that is called sthanu nikana yeah sthanu nikana nyaya ha that that stamastapana nyaya okay oh, no problem okay okay so yeah different words may be used for that that's how i learned it good so we'll okay, pause so jagma just to finish so viparita bhavana nivritti is exactly what it is then viparita bhavana nivritti viparita bhavana is exactly what you do reorientation Reorient. reorientation like just like you are getting reoriented when you come to chennai ah okay everything reorientation you know what you know what an elevator but here you can't say elevator in the hotel you have to say where is the lift you say elevator okay. and then what is kya elevator bolta hai tum it's a lift lift kahan par yeah that means you are reorienting you know you know everything you're not an agnani when it comes to all these things you know everything right the this is different yes and okay the so the three the bhavana nivritti is this reorientation you see reorientation reorientation of so the, otherwise all knee jerk reactions have been there hmm otherwise you know, if, if i don't reorient knee jerk reaction will be there knee jerk because that's how i live there's no i don't know any other way of living there's only one way of living i know hmm. one way of responding i know anger comes frustration comes fear comes anxiety comes how are you going to remove the anxiety I have to this is the time when the vision whatever i studied in class has to be brought to bear upon the current mm. situation and that nijit dhyasana will mm. will help to yeah Okay, thank you, Jay Kumar ji. Good, thank you. Very good, thank you. Good, Shalini ji, welcome. I uh, I don't know if I know you or not, but uh, I may have spoken to you. I don't remember. Ah, uh, I don't uh, think you noticed me. I usually usually used to put my video off, uh, and uh, um, I do not get uh, regular. There's just one link that I got uh, in in July or August when we started off and. that's when i have been following and today um uh ar narayanan ji he teaches me and he asked me to switch the video on and that's how you came to notice me thank you so oh. much for your teachings yeah i have been following whatever i can i am just a beginner so i try to follow but it's beautiful what i heard about nidhi haras today where do you live where do you live shalini ji i am in chandigarh chandigarh okay Do we have anybody from Haryana? From no. Chandigarh means now this is Haryana or this Punjab? This is neither or? Haryana nor Punjab. This is the capital of both, but it is a union territory. So it is it is actually uh, the capital of Punjab shared by Haryana. So, but it's got an existence of its own pretty city. Most welcome. No, it's, a, it's a union territory, huh? It's a union territory. It must feel good to be in the union territory, no? Or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's uh, the only planned city in india so it's very very um, it's very pretty it's very green it's in a grid so you can you can get you even if you try to you can get lost in here and it's uh, it's it's called the 20 minute city of india it's got everything from a medical college to an engineering college to everything all the facilities but still the you can get from anywhere to anywhere in 20 minutes and we still don't have uh, massive traffic jams or stuff like that so it's a wonderful city to live in and it's all gardens it's all gardens it's very very green wow ah mm -hmm. uh, it's french architect has uh, designed that uh, yeah Pont french architect le corbusier le yes, corbusier yes. was uh, the french architect who designed it and <clears throat> so you must come you most welcome please come and visit it okay definitely we will we'll all uh, Make a visit to Chandigarh. My Are son is uh, why my son is enamored by your face. The look, I mean, uh, he comes to people now and then. He's uh, he's taken his class twelve exams, and he says uh, he's not interested in anything remotely spiritual. But he says I like I like the look of this man. He seems really learned. So I 
I thought I might slip in a compliment to you today since I've got a chance to. <laughs> he says, no, they're all very good, but this person is different. So I say, yeah. I might. Thank you so much. <laughs> Compliments from Chandigarh. Are, wow. This is everywhere. We have to so, Yeah. Narayan ji, are you recording this? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the very important Thank you. Very nice. He's in 12th grade, isn't it? Yeah, he's just cleared his 12th. He's preparing for his exams, entrance exams. And uh, of course, will not take suggestions from me, no matter how much I learn and try to pass it on. <laughs> like how we were. So it's a circle. You, you realize that. <laughs> so you thought you were very attentive and then you realize you weren't. So yeah. So he's uh, he's planning on uh, he has ideas on where he uh, which college etc. Um, wherever he gets because we are the general category and he has to take his NEET which is entrance to the medicals, very very tough. So <laughs> yeah, so we can't really choose. But yeah, like last year when he took it for the first time, he has a he had had his guns trained on AFMC, but now his eyesight uh, number has increased beyond minus three. So he's out of that. But uh, yeah, so let's see. Oh, AFMC, Air Force Medical College. Yeah, in Pune. But now he says, no, I I won't be fit for that. So maybe let's see whatever he gets into. Oh, so AFMC also, they do all these uh, physical tests and all that. Yes, flat foot, uh, you cannot get in. Eyesight, beyond a certain number, you cannot get in. That's the army. So yeah. You... So I remember one of my classmates long ago in school, he... Uh, Applied for NDA. It's called NDA, I think. NDA. National, National Defense Academy. Defense Academy. And he passed and everything, but he the test, medical test, they told him you have a hole in your heart. Yes. Until then, life was good. Means no hole. Child can't be stopped by a hole in the heart. And so then suddenly, a hole in the heart, all of us said, Oh, you have a hole in the heart. What does it mean? Yes, he's doing quite fine now. But uh, I remember that NDA and all these rigorous uh, physical tests. And so. so I think all these academies, uh, military or defense academies, have this kind of. Yes, they do. Because yeah. everyone has to be in a complete army in in themselves. You know, every soldier, every person working in the army. So, like uh, I remember an incident, I think two three years ago, where. Um, Militants in, infiltrated an army camp in uh, in Baramula in Jammu and Kashmir, and they came from the back where the mess was, and there were only cooks in there, and the cooks did not even have proper uh, guns. They had those, uh, you know, the ones that have knives in the front, and with that alone, the cooks managed to wipe out a lot of terrorists who were armed with ultra modern weapons, and only two three of them got into, and then the officers took care. So otherwise, they would have, if they had they entered and, you know, they would have killed all the officers in that mess. So everyone has to be, uh, yeah, so that's the way the army functions. I see, I see. So, so there is a doctor, our family doctor is a, is a commander. He was an Air Force commander, I think. But he's a doctor, commander as in he, he was in the doctor, medical service. They also have this uh, grades, no? Commander and all they have. They also can be a... And so that person also should have gone through some kind of minimum level of uh, health lots, and all. Lots of training, lots of screening for health issues, lots of stuff, sir. Amazing, amazing. My goodness. Wow. So yesterday, the chief of uh, medical services for the army is now a lady, highest ranking lady ever held in India. Highest ranking? Lady officer. Oh. She got appointed yesterday. Or yesterday or day before. It was there in the news yesterday. Jay Kumarji, there is a correction in the defense. NDA, there is a strict uh, body checkup. Your fitness. Fitness, weight, everything, heart, eyesight, brain, everything to get admission. After the admission, when they pass out from NDA, even at different level before promotion, see, uh, 
start with the start with lieutenant you know Second then the, depends yeah. upon the depends upon the wing whether it's army or navy or air yeah force. it depends upon and uh, for navy also every promotion at every level generally also they have every year checkup fitness checkup and every promotion they again very thoroughly severe strict checkup so everything even as slice test brain function eye function especially air force and navy the warships and the air force the flights you know uh, air flights all those things they have to be very careful very strict that is for the service people then they appoint some people as civilians so for them it is little easier so there are two types of appointments one is civilian appointment and one is through academy and through short service commission that is in derad very good cool, indian military academy rukmanish ji son is, was in the navy for many years and so yeah, he, he completed 20 years and uh, he took retirement as a commander i know he used to be command the warships you know sailing goes out warships so how strict he they used to be very good very good amazing so much to know <clears throat> how's how's prakash doing tripuni ji uh he is doing very well and uh, he has got a lectureship in his wollongong university itself his guide didn't want to lose him okay now vrinda has got admission she has won three certificates at school final level and mm. uh, four awards in maths maths two subjects and uh, science Mm-hmm. and she got a scholarship also for her admission 20% in the university she got admission in canberra also but okay. uh, she preferred to be in wollongong because it is close by they have been lost uh, four years they are there so prakash is very busy now going to jakarta indonesia to okay. conduct classes for the naval officers there wow so background so prakash is son uh, her son is uh, living in uh, outside outskirts of sydney i think so no he is in ulangong university campus which is uh, in sydney only no which is uh, 85 miles away from sydney right so near sydney and so did a phd he wanted to do a phd in this naval naval area He, for that he quit navy and went there and so now they want he's now finished his phd recently some two three years back only he finished and so he's now become a the faculty and he's doing all that so his area of research is very interesting also just the naval security of the entire world so an- analyzing that and so for very very fascinating very practical in fact we don't know we don't know about it but it is a practical thing for any country has become the number one in the naval security especially in the gulf region especially in this uh, because of the conflict in the middle east india is the first commando is the number one in the world now okay especially in naval commandos marine yes. command i see okay very good thanks to all of them uh, we are able to have a vedanta class without any anxiety and fear you know you get what's going on in lebanon and this and that very oh. sad thank you om namo bhagavate vasudevaya dhanvantaraye amrita kalasha hastaya sarva maya vinashanaya trilokyanathaya shri mahavishnave namaha